Chicago, WMAQ. Women, the wax needs you now. For information, go to room 601-166 West Van Buren Street. Don't delay. Do your share for victory. So travel in class. I got plenty of gas. Man, you might as well stop because you're blowing your top. Yes, nothing but propaganda. If you hear that I'm tough and I'm stealing your stuff, like those jokes off the cuff, propaganda. If I tell a few gags about Uncle Bing's nag and the program still drags, Have you ever had this experience? You're sitting in someone's living room and you suddenly notice how beautiful the finish is on a certain table. It has a soft, satiny luster, free from dust and fingerprints, and the grain of the wood itself is clear and lovely. You ask your hostess the reason for this beautiful finish, and she tells you that for years that table has been waxed regularly with Johnson's Wax. It has had no other treatment, no other care. It might have been Johnson's Paste or Liquid Wax or the Cream Wax, especially developed for furniture and woodwork. The point is, regular waxing and polishing has made that piece of furniture more beautiful with the years. It has guarded its finish against stains and minor scratches, made dusting and cleaning very easy. When you apply a coat of Johnson's Wax to floors, furniture, and woodwork, you're giving them a shield of protection. The wax takes the wear. The finish underneath is guarded. It's a good idea to have Johnson's Wax on hand to help take care of the things you can't replace. Physicians don't have much time for social chit-chat or coffee-clutching these days. So as Dr. Gamble parks his car in the driveway and approaches the door at 79 Wistful Vista, there is considerable speculation between Fibber McGee and Molly. I tell you, I did pay his bill, Molly. Are you sure? Absolutely. I sent him a check just yesterday with a little note saying, thanks for all your kindnesses, and please don't cash this check till Friday. <laughs> Heavenly days, doesn't he look tired? Oh, boy, oh, boy, boy. The good thing we have a doorbell. He doesn't look like he had the strength to use a knocker. Yeah. I'll take him upstairs to the full-length mirror. That guy needs to consult himself. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Hello, McGee. Hello, doctor. Hi, doc, old man. Park your pink pillows on the piano and plunk the pelvis into a pile of pillows, kid. <laughs> Well, I'd love to, McGee, but I can't stay. Oh. Just stopped in to ask you folks a favor. Well, ask us anything, Doctor. Heavenly days, you look all worn out. Oh, I am worn out. I feel like something a not very discriminating cat had dragged in. Oh. Last night, I found myself looking at a patient's watch and taking my own pulse. Oh, dear. When I delivered a baby this morning, I told the infant to stay on duty all day and spanked my intern. I've got to take a day off or I'll fall apart like a wet donut. Well, that's the old spirit, Doc. Get away from it all. Take a day or two and go fishing. I'll go with you. Oh, no, you won't, dearie. The doctor needs to get away by himself. Can I brew you a slug of tea, doctor? Well, no, thank you, my dear. I just wanted to ask you if you mind my leaving my car in your garage for a day. Having enough gas for a trip, and if I leave it in my own garage, people will think I'm at home and keep ringing my bell. Why, sure, Doc. Leave it here. I'll run it into the garage and shut the door. Hey, I got a swell, some swell cock flies you can have. I'm you? not going to fish, McGee. Oh. Fish remind me too much of people. Cold-blooded, expressionless, horrible appetites and think they're big stuff when they wave a fin in your face. Thanks very much, folks. <laughs> he proves what I always said, Molly. The higher the education, the lower opinion you have of people. Oh, no, he just talks like that. You know, he does more charity work than any doctor in town. Trouble with him is he graduated from Rush and hasn't slowed down since. (laughs) Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wash his car for him. Where's the big sponge? Why, don't you remember? You cut it all to pieces when you were inventing that new life preserver. You stuffed it full of sponges. Oh, 
yeah. Doesn't work out so good for some reason. The doctor's car doesn't need washing anyway. It looks nice. Well, I got to do something for the poor guy. I may tune up the motor. Oh, hey, I know. I'm going to switch his tires. Well, all right, if it'll make you feel any better. I'll go out and cut a switch, huh? No. <laughs> you don't understand, Molly. I'm, I'm going to crisscross them. Change them around from one wheel to another. Oh, I see. Yeah. You change them around so they'll all wear out at the same time. That's it. Instead of needing one new tire, you'll be flat on your rims. Well, that, that ain't exactly... Hello there, kids. Got company? No, Mr. Oldtimer. That's Dr. Gamble's car in the driveway. He left it here for a day or so. He's going away for a rest, Oldtimer. Sure needs it, too. Looks like he'd been drugged through a knothole. <laughs> uh, I know exactly how it is, kids. Yep. As one cannonball, a cannibal says to another cannibal, you can sure get fed up with people. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Fluffed it right off. Always kind of like to be by myself, myself. <laughs> Me too. Sometimes I feel like I wanted to go up in the mountains and live in a cave like a hornet. No, you mean hermit, dearie. I do not. A hermit is an iron hat. That's a derby. No, that's a helmet. Go on. A helmet is a swing that you'll break your neck if you swat a fly while you're in it is. <laughs> you're thinking of a hummock, Johnny. No, he isn't. He means hammock. A hummock is a little mound of earth. That's what I says. I want to go up in the mountains and live in a little mound of earth. Don't blame you, Johnny. Too many people in the world. I used to have a little ranch in Wyoming, but I gave it up. Folks pestered me too much. All day long, you mean? Well, not exactly, daughter. But it was more than I could stand. Had the ranch from 1901 till 1914. It was fairly peaceable. Then in the summer of 1915... Feller wandered in, lost his way, stayed two days. Oh. Then in 1916, a couple of cowboys rode within half a mile of my ranch house and waved to me. That settled it for me. I got out of there. No elbow room. I hate crowds. <laughs> Say, uh, have you and your girlfriend made up yet? You and Bessie? Nope. But I got my eye on a new gal, kid. Oh. By Baron at the library. Cuter as a bug's ear. Cuter. Never seen a bug's ear to compare with Piggy. Who? Piggy. You mean Peggy. I mean Piggy. Walked home with her the other night, and she kept saying, we ought to go to a movie. We ought to go someplace and eat. We ought to do this. We ought to do that. And that's why I call her Piggy. It was we, we, we all the way home. <laughs> Two front tires off, Molly. Good thing I'm changing them, too. Look at that tread. They're thinner than Hitler's chances of a ripe old age. They do look a little weary, don't they? Betcha. What do you do now? I'll put these on the back wheels and take the ones off the back wheels and put them on the front wheels. Very simple. Now, how do you get the back end raised up? Take the jack out from under the front end and... Oh, I need another jack, don't I? You know, it's... 
times like this that I'm proudest of you, McGee. Huh? The way your flashing intelligence leaps to a brilliant conclusion rocks me right back on my house dress. <laughs> well, gee whiz, I... Oh, I got it. Look, all I got to do is let the front end down, take the jack out, and... No, that won't work. You held out a jack when you turned our car in. Why didn't you use that? Can't. I'm using that to hold the cellar window open. Well, you can close the cellar window a few minutes. We're not fumigating. There must be a simpler way than that. Oh, I know. I'll just slip a box under the front end and let the car down on that. Here's one right here that ought to do the trick. Now, don't you think, McGee, that maybe you ought to... Ah, there. Just the right height, too. You see what I mean, Molly? There's a right way and a wrong way to do everything. Now I just yank the yak, I mean yank the jack out from under the... Oh! Oh, dear. Now show me the right way. <laughs> well, my gosh, I thought those corrugated cardboard boxes were stronger than that. <laughs> any damage on your side? Not a bit, except the front axle is bent a little. Does that do any harm? Nah, it might make it steer a little crooked as all, but... <laughs> Doc, don't drive fast anyway. Where's all that oil coming from? There's a big crack in the crankcase, McGee. Crack in the crankcase? Boy, it's a good thing we discovered that. Probably saved Doc a big repair bill. Well, what do we do now, Mr. Chrysler? Well, I'll have to put the jack back under the front and... Can't get it under now. It's too low. Why don't you put it under the bumper? Huh? Under the bumper? Oh, yeah. I was just going to do that. <laughs> There's always a way if you just use your brain. Yeah. Now, let's see. Bumper broke off. You know, it's a good thing Dr. Gamble is an obstetri obstetrician. I never could say that. <laughs> Just think of those lucky bouncing babies having a bouncing doctor coming to see them on a pogo stick. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with this car that can't be fixed. Now, let me see. How can I raise the front end again? Well, take out one of the inner tubes and let the air out and slide it under the axle and pump it up again. Oh, wonderful. Now, let me see. If I use... Hiya, folks. Hey, got a new car? Well, no, Mr. Wilcox. No, this is Dr. Gamble's car. We're taking care of it for him. Well, wouldn't it be easier to take care of if you left it in one piece? <laughs> well, McGee's switching the tires for the doctor, Mr. Wilcox, just as a favor. Yeah, take a gander at those casings, Junior. Not enough rubber on them to make a girdle for a gremlin. <laughs> Oh, that one there looks all right. Yeah, but look at this one. One little kick like this and... Oh. <laughs> Dear Mr. Jeffers. <laughs> we are writing you today because the situation has a role... Well, that... doggone it, I'm glad it blew up. Might have saved Doc a nasty accident. <laughs> well, that's about all you've saved him, pal. Better start patching that tire, McGee. Can't. I haven't got any tire tools. Oh, Doc's got some. Keeps them in the back seat. Stick your head in the window and see, dearie. Okay. Oh. Dead oh. <laughs> rat, the dead rat. Nobody's got any right to have their car windows as clean as that. <laughs> I thought it was open. Well, you know how doctors are about cleanliness, pal. Did you ever notice his office is always slick and clean as a whistle? Oh. And you know why? No. Why, Mr. Wilson? <laughs> why, inquired the handsome little chap in the gray suit with eagerness in his face and murder in his heart? <laughs> well, because he uses Johnson's wax on everything, that's why. Oh, that's why. He knows that when his floors and furniture and windowsills and lampshades are wax protected against dust and dampness, it saves his office girl hours of cleaning time. To say nothing of the good impression it makes on his patients to have everything so shiny, so gleaming with cleanliness. Oh, his office does look nice, Mr. Wilcox. So what if it does? You don't have to go to college eight years to learn about Johnson's wax. Any dumbbell knows it's the best there is. Even I know that. <laughs> well, there's another thing, too. It costs a lot of dough to equip a doctor's office. Oh. So the smart ones, like Doc Gamble, protect and preserve their equipment with Johnson's wax. Mm -hmm. Why, whenever I... 
<laughs> well, what's the joke, Mr. Wilcox? Joke? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's so funny? Oh, nothing. I'm spoiled, I guess. <laughs> I always like to leave on a laugh. <laughs> See you later, folks. <laughs> Dear, dear, what a ham. <laughs> you know, McGee, I think that's why Mr. Wilcox is such a successful salesman. He laughs at everything. Yeah. You know what his slogan is? Prosperity is just around the corn. <laughs> <laughs> Look who's talking. Well, I got to get busy here. Wish I had the jack out of that cellar window. You know, something tells me that what we're really going to need is pure peasant strength. You better get some help. Well, who'd I get? Just grab some passerby that... Hey, there's a sailor going past. Maybe he'd help. Hey! Hey, sailor! Oh, McGee, now you shouldn't do... Well, heavenly days, McGee, look who it is. Well, I'll be a... La Trivia! Hello, McGee. Hello, Mrs. McGee. Nice to see you. (laughs) My goodness, it's nice to see you, Mr. La Trivia. And you look so lovely in your sailor suit. Yeah, you're looking swell, La Trivia, old man. Oh, except... Uh, uh, except what, McGee? Except you've uh, filled out kind of funny. <laughs> Look how his suit fits, Molly. He's gained around the waist and lost around the ankles. Oh, don't be silly, McGee. All Navy uniforms sit that way. Oh. You look like the Coast Guard has treated you all right, Mr. Mayor. Uh, not mayor anymore, Mrs. McGee. Just Coast Guardsman will trivia now. I'm a first-class seaman. I'll bet you are at that. <laughs> In town just for the day, Mr. Ma- uh, uh, Mr. Coast, uh, uh, Coast Gu- uh, uh, just for the day, huh? No, I'm on ten days' leave, Mrs. McGee. I secured my gear, battened down the fiddly hatches, shut off the scuttlebutt, got an okay from the CO, stowed my hammock, and came ashore for a land cruise. Ha <laughs> ha, La Trivia, you're so salty, you make me thirsty. <laughs> How about coming in the house for a hook or a root beer? Pipe me aboard, mate. Oh, listen to him, will you? I just love sailors. You know, when I was a girl, I adored to read about our first American admiral, John Charles Thomas. <laughs> that was John Paul Jones, Mrs. McGee. Well, what's the difference? They both earned their wheat cakes on the high seas. <laughs> Get it, kid? High seas? It's sort of a pun. It ain't funny, McGee. (laughs) That's strange. I was vastly amused by it. I always... What's the matter, Mr. I was just looking at your car, McGee. Anybody hurt in the wreck? Well, it isn't our car. It's uh, Dr. Gamble's car. I'm changing the tires around for him, Latriv. A couple of things went a little haywire. So I see. The upholstery is still in pretty good shape. Oh, yeah. Or uh, haven't you gotten around to that yet? Now, look here, La Trivia. It's all very well for you to stand there pointing your finger at me like a recruiting poster. Oh, McGee. Uh, Don't talk so much and get to work. I'll go and make you boys some lemonade. It's going to be a pretty hot afternoon before McGee, uh, how did Dr. Gamble ever get this car over here in this shape? Well, it wasn't exactly in this shape, La Trivia. I bent the axle when the front end fell down. Cracked the crankcase at the same time. Stuck my head through the window looking for tire tools. And that tire blew out when I was showing Wilcox how bad the rubber was. And all I done was give it a little kick like this. (laughs) Tire blew out. Yes, I see. That's what always happens when you try to do somebody a good turn, La Trivia. I swear if I ever... Hi, mister. Oh, hi, sis. Now, now, I haven't got time to talk to you now. Go away and come back some other time. Say about September 1954. Hello, little girl. Remember me? No, but Jim and me, I'd like to. <laughs> oh, you remember this man, sis. Used to be mayor of Wistful Vista. Mayor of the Trivia. Mm, gee, he's beautiful. Are you an admiral, mister? <laughs> Are you? Hmm? No, no, honey. I'm a coast guardsman. Just a sailor. What do you mean, just a sailor? <laughs> I think sailors are wonderful. You, uh, you know any girls in town, mister? Hmm? Uh, well, I, uh... On account of the... On account... If you don't know any girls here, sailor, I, uh... <laughs> well, gee, maybe you and me could... Uh... Now look, sis, now look. <laughs> We're pretty busy here, so well, you just... it just happens, mister, that I was on my way to the drugstore to get a soda... Anyway, I would have been if I had a dime, so maybe... Well, now, come to think of it, I wanted a soda myself. 
Would you give me the pleasure of your company to the drugstore, madam? Give you the pleasure? <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> well, I guess I'll go along, too. Soda would just No, be... no, no, no. You stay here, Mr. McGee. Gee, don't you know when people want to be alone together, hmm? Don't you, hmm? Come on, sailor. Let's shove off. Aye, right, ma'am. I'll be back in a little while, McGee. So hey, just... hey, mister. Hmm? Let's get going quick now. Here comes Willie Toops. Take a hold of my arm. Hmm? Come on. Oh, the boyfriend. <laughs> Come on. So long, McGee. Hey, doggone it. Don't I even Sailing, get... Sailing, sailing over the bounding me. Hey, Willie. Willie, look the fleet, Sam. <laughs> And the man with the big sombrero. You have heard of the king caballero, who'd love him and then leave him flat. But I know a gay caballero whose technique is smoother than that. The man with the big sombrero lives down in Mexico. He's got a hat as big as that, a wonderful chapeau. The man with the big sombrero is strictly on the beam. And every fair muchacha there is crazy after him for when it rains, when it pours, they get under his big wonderful sombrero. When it's hot, out of doors, every lady loves the shady caballero. They all come around the market to gather around his cart. They push and shove for making love with him. He's such an art. These man with a big sombrero, no bigger than his heart. Thirty days, Hacienda, April, June, and sombrero. And my brother, he's got thirty-two. So into jail he goes for punching in the nose. The man with the big sombrero who lives in Mexico, he's got a nose just like a rose beneath his big chapeau. The man with the big sombrero, he's not so very smart. the dirtiest luck of anybody. Oh, hi, La Trivia. You back already? Yes, the excitement of three sodas in succession was a little too much. Well, what's been going on here? Ain't it a mess? <laughs> I rigged up a block and tackle to the limb of the tree there and fastened a rope to one of the headlights and tried to raise the front of the car. <laughs> and what happens? The tree breaks. The rope busts, the headlight comes off, and I fall smack on my clavicle. <laughs> You ought to have a job in the Navy Yard at Willemshaven. Huh? You'd have the German fleet wrecked in 24 hours. <laughs> Doggone it, if I had realized Doc's car was put together with thumbtacks and tomato juice, I'd have... I'd have... Oh, 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 oh. here comes Wimple. Oh, hi, hi, Wally, old man. Hello there, Wimple. Nice to see you again. How's Mrs. Wimple? Oh, sweetie face is just fine, Mr. McKinney. <laughs> Did you know, Mr. McGee, we're having a blessed event at our house next week? No. Really, Wimple? Yes, indeed. What? Sweetie Face made her reservation yesterday. Oh, at the hospital? Oh, no, silly. On the railroad. She's going to Texas for two weeks. Isn't that the most blessed event you could think of? <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be a bachelor for a couple of weeks, Wimple, huh? Yes. And you know what? No. I want all you fellows to come over to my house Thursday night for a game of dominoes. <laughs> Strictly stag, of course. <laughs> I sneaked out this afternoon and ordered a case of orange fresh. <laughs> well, I hope we don't get raided. 
How about you, Latrivia? Oh, I'm just in the mood for a wild time. Uh, I'll bring the cubebs. <laughs> yes. We'll make it an all-night affair. Oh. Till 11 or 11.30. <laughs> what do we care? We only live once. Remember, fellows, Thursday night, see you then. <laughs> That ought to be quite a fracas. I hope Wimp don't play with Mark Domino. Well, I'm glad it isn't poker. Wimp would use matches for chips, and my mother doesn't like me to play with matches. <laughs> Look, Latrivia, let's see if we can't uh, jack up the back end of Dr. Uh, Clark. Uh, too late, Tim McGee. Huh? I said it's too late. Here comes Doc Gamble now. Oh, my gosh. What'll he do when he sees what I've done to... Oh, Mama, he'll kill me. Remember, Latrivia, he hit me first. Oh, now, I... take it easy. Take it easy. Nobody's hit anybody yet. Maybe he was... Oh, hello there, Doc. Well, 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 Latrivia, nice to see you, my boy. You don't know what it means to me to see a completely healthy human being. <laughs> I'm so used to seeing pasty faces, flabby muscles, and nerves that jingle, jang, and jingle that a normal body looks like a biological freak. <laughs> take off your shirt. <laughs> There you go again. Take off your shirt. I absolutely I do. wasn't talking to you, McGee. I'm at La Trivia. Well, why, Doctor? Well, I'd like to listen to one heart that doesn't sound like a Spike Jones jam session. <laughs> I'd like to reassure myself that there's one human ventricle left in the world that doesn't open and shut like a miser's purse. <laughs> a boy, uh, I... Hey, uh... Hey, Doc. Yeah? You, uh... <laughs> notice anything? <laughs> yes, you've wrecked my car. Now, I tell you, La Trivia, my boy... <laughs> Trivia, you're a sight for sore eyes. I was getting to the point where the only place I could see a sound physique was reading Tarzan and Flash Gordon. Feeling fine, are you? Splendid, Doctor. Never felt better. A oh. great life. I'm as hard as a bride's biscuit. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. If everybody would hey, only... Uh, hey, Doc. Will you stop tugging at my sleeve, <laughs> McGee? What do you want? You, uh, you ain't sore because I, 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 I ruined your jalopy? Gee, I was only trying to... Don't be silly. I'm delighted. If I haven't got a car, I can't see so many people. If people can't get a doctor, they'll simply have to take an aspirin and go to bed, which is what I'd tell them to do anyway. I don't think the car is a complete wreck, Doctor. You can probably save the radio. That's a dubious blessing. Does it still work? Oh, sure it works, Doc. Sure it does. Look. See? With the all-out bombardment of Sicily by flying fortresses, Mitchell and Boston bombers, it would appear to your commentator that Sicily will be the next focal point a pre-invasion attack. Well, did you what? hear what he said? Oh, Isn't that terrific? Hey, no, we really are. Oh, oh, here, here, what is it? What's all the cheering, boy? It's great, great news, Mrs. McGee. We're going after Sicily, Molly. Looks like we take it, Mrs. McGee. Oh, oh come on. Well, what's so exciting about that? Don't you understand, Mrs. McGee? It's Sicily. The first island we've hit yet that anybody could pronounce. Anybody can stay still and say... Pardon me, I'm sure, if I paraphrase an old saying. Dirt may come and dirt may go, but a glow-coated floor goes on forever. At least practically forever if you use Johnson's Glow Coat regularly on your linoleum surfaces. Scrubbing linoleum is bad for it. You've heard me say that many times before. Linoleum manufacturers themselves and housekeeping authorities, too, recommend a polish like Glow Coat that gives protection to the linoleum and other floor surface, adds beauty, keeps colors fresh and new-looking. Johnson's Glow Coat is self-polishing, needs no rubbing or buffing. Therefore, you see, it saves two ways. Saves the linoleum, saves you time and work. And by the way, if you have floors of asphalt tile or rubber tile, remember that Glow Coat is the preferred polish for these floors, too. Next week is our last broadcast for the summer. My gosh, it is. Hey, let's do something big. Let's get a lot of guest stars. Let's get Clark Gable. And... Clark Gable is in the Air Force. Well, let's get Henry Fonda. Fonda's in the Navy. Well, let's get Tyrone Powers. Powers and... in the Marine. Well, then we'll do it the hard way. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. <laughs> Characters of the old-timer and Wallace Wimple were played by Bill Thompson. 
This is Harlow Wilcox, speaking for the makers of Johnson Wax Finishes for the whole man industry, inviting you all to join us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National...